straight into it. As a food, most foodies are broke. And that's like real. That's what I, that's, that's some shit I found out behind the scenes. Like Unlocked has his own business. That yeah. dude's got businesses. Yeah, he's got he, he's a businessman, yep. right? Foodie is just what he does. Like Vegas Starfish, she's a host. She's got a bunch of other things going mm -hmm. on, right? Most people who are starting food blogs typically have other jobs. Yeah. Like the food, the foodie people think A lot like, of them that come in my restaurant do. Yeah. Keith Lee, everybody thinks everybody's like Keith Lee. So they'll, you'll see the comments on our page where they'll be like, oh, well, how much you get paid, you should pay for the food. And I'm like, bro, do you know the average restaurant can't, af like the average restaurant can't afford to pay all these foodies? Yeah. Like, what do you guys think? It's a lot of money. What do you think the restaurant, yeah, what do you think the restaurant? Because the margins are so th slim that like that $400 might be. That's it. Yeah. That's what they got. Exactly. You know? And when I first started doing the foodie game, I never, never would allow restaurants to take the money because I wasn't 100% confident that I could provide value. Right, like if I could control, if if I could ensure, if I was Keith Lee, and every video was China Mama, every video was a million views on TikTok mm -hmm. every time, then yeah, I would feel real comfortable charging crazy prices. But I can't guarantee that. So for me, yeah. I when I first started, I felt really uncomfortable. So do you think that a lot of the foodies validate themselves off just followers? No, because 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 like you said, you know. It's, it's easy to fake followers, right? Sure. Not saying that they're doing that, but sure. um, like you just said, you want to provide value on views. I've never been approached by a foodie that said, hey, this is the amount of views we get. It's always, well, I got 100,000 followers. Followers. You know, and it's like, okay, I have 60,000 followers, but I also have slow days. I also have slow days. Yeah. And I, I'll i be the first person to be honest with you. There's some videos, like I posted about a Greek restaurant the other day that I I love it. I genuinely love this restaurant, mm -hmm. okay? And I wanted the video to go viral so badly because mm -hmm. I love the restaurant yeah. and I love the owner. Yep. He's local. He's mm -hmm. my kind of guy. But no matter what I do, Greek restaurants never go viral. Mm. There's almost a Greek food and Indian food don't go viral. Really? So I don't know why. Not either. It's, it's just, delicious. They're, deli they're the most delicious yeah, foods. Yeah, Indian they, food is wow. But incredible. they don't crack on social media because a lot of mm. people are kind of intimidated or whatever. I don't know. Um, so it's like you want to film videos. I want to talk to the owner and be like, hey, look, I have combined 600,000 followers on all platforms. My videos do this much success, but I know in my heart of hearts that my Greek food videos don't crack like that. So how do you – yeah, how do you, do you tell them that? Do you I'm honest. Just, okay. I'm that's honest. Good. That's good. I'm 100% honest. Well, they appreciate I appreciate that too I, probably. Yeah. I, op I open up my view count. I open up everything to the to the owners typically. Um, especially if it's like a promotional thing, mm -hmm. right? Most of my videos I do are authentic. It's me, like, I'm driving around for work. I need a quick place to eat. Uh, it's just me and my camera. I'm walking in here to eat. But if it's like a promotional thing, like the Greek restaurant, then it's like, okay, how much value can I provide in the time that I'm here? And when you say that, is that determined on how much you charge or are you not charging at all, ever? It. I have a rule. And I, okay. I, I you know, a lot of people like to be, the influencer game, the the especially the food part of it, is kept real in the dark. Like, no one knows how much Keith Lee gets paid, but you know, it's a lot because like, if he makes a video, you're sold you're sold out that day. Yeah, and you see him with these different brand deals as well. hundred percent. So you know that there's something, but you don't know. You know there's something. Uh, you, you think, yeah, right? We, you, we can assume. We can assume. Yeah, right. But the, it's a, it's a well kept secret. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, if it's a big business, like. Um, last year, a, a large, I can't say the name because we, we signed all these things. Yeah, no a, a, one of the large casinos in Vegas brought me in to, to shoot some of the stuff for their restaurants. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, fortunately, the video did really well on all awesome. platforms. Mm -hmm. They get the full, what we call a media kit. They get the full media kit. You're, you're a strip casino. You have a marketing budget that's extravagant. Yeah. You put up billboards. You hire all these people. So for them, they get a full media kit. Most and I'm not going to say all because, again, I don't know every foodie in the game. Most of the Vegas foodies charge a very small set fee. Flat rate. Flat rate for local small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. We have to because at a certain, if we don't, we'll get too many requests. Well, then you can't eat all that food. And we can't either. eat all that food. Yeah. So we have to – it's partially, obviously, because it's a job, it's a profession, yep. it's marketing, mm -hmm. so there has to be a pay scale. But it's also because, like, we can only eat so much food in a day. Well, you know where I find uh, difficulty is some because so, the approach. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So some will approach me. I will approach some influencers sure. and bloggers and, and, and I don't know what to offer as a dollar amount. I don't know if I'm going to disrespect them by offering food. I don't know, you know, because at the end of the day, right, I, I'm I'm a restaurant owner and my budget's, you know, not the best. But mm -hmm. I understand that I need to have one. So I sure. set aside for one. But I don't know if there's a certain criteria. Like if you have 10,000 followers, I give you $100. If you have 20,000, I give you 200. You know what I mean? But the problem that I'm seeing is the foodies aren't really running the the sorry let's not put them all in one bubble but let's say like the the, the up and coming foodies aren't really running it as a business yeah. they don't ha so see my, i told a friend one time he has a different business he has a, a beat business he makes beats i said he's like zach people always come to me expecting to get free beats but when they go to you they already know that you got to pay i said because you need a menu yeah i said you need a set menu 100 percent. and so i feel like that would help a lot um for restaurants to understand that they you know i let me say it like this sometimes i, I don't know if to offer these people because they might do it for free maybe i don't want to disrespect them i don't want to i don't know you're you're on the right and a lot of restaurant owners that i've spoken to feel the same way it's again we keep all this in the dark so yeah. it's really hard for us to operate when i don't there's know no, approach there's no set of approach and when i first got started i i did i i paid my way through all this right but thankfully i'm a realtor so mm -hmm. yeah. i have you know Side the income, income on the back yep. to, to, mm -hmm. to to do this but when you're starting as a foodie like i told you earlier a lot of foodies are broke a lot of foodies are living check to check they're doing the foodie thing as a hobby or maybe hoping it turns into something Correct. one day so for for me when i when i first started real estate and i was broke someone offering me free food i was like Shit, i'll come Hell film yeah you you're gonna bring me and you're gonna bring me the whole menu to eat i'm broke this is the best thing ever for me right what I would say is, and this is, you're my dog, so I can yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. There are four foodies, and I'm not going to include myself because I'm not on the level of these people. Mm -hmm. Unlocked, Starfish, Hooked, Keith Lee. You can check their track records. You can go through their videos. You can see the companies and brands that they have worked for. If Unlocked is your social media manager, if you bring him in, check the numbers. Yeah. Check those guys' pods. Check anybody that he yeah. does work with. You can see it, right? You can see the numbers. As a restaurant owner, that's what I would tell people to do. Yeah. Go to the foodies page. Go through their history. Check what their videos do on the brands that they work with consistently. Not the one, not the one-off. Yeah, the one ones post. they work yeah. with consistently. Yeah. I, I went to Herbs and Rye consistently. Mm -hmm. You can check those numbers, right? I would check what these foodies do consistently, and measure it off of that. Measure it only off of that. Because if they can't bring you in consistent business, a one-off viral video doesn't do anything for your business, right? You need that consistency. The other issue is that that's not, I don't think that's what restaurant owners think. I think they think the one-off video is the way to go. No. How many videos has Keith Lee blown up? Go to those restaurants. Yeah. They're not all busy. Oh, I know. I know firsthand. I've seen it plenty of times no. because, you know, it's not the one-off. The one-off will get you the exposure, but you mm -hmm. have to constantly keep marketing constantly. and constantly keep putting yourself out there. Yeah. Right? And and, and everybody thinks that he's the he's just the Band-Aid. Yeah. You know, he's just the temporary fix. He's a temporary Band-Aid. Which, 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 I'm going to be honest, I've seen him change lives. Yeah. And so no discredit to anything he's Frankincense. doing. Frankincense. Frankincense, even yeah, I've had plenty of other friends that they're so blessed and thankful. But three to four months later, it's you know, yes, it's their 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 bottom line is it's higher, mm -hmm. but it's not where it was. It's not know, when they were you, doing seven hundred dollars to seven thousand. You can't, within but, but you hours. but you also you also no no restaurant outside of McDonald's, Applebee's has the budget to have Keith Lee on retainer. Oh, no, I, trust me, I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody has the budget to keep him on retainer. You you would need yeah. to be a big brand like Subway. And and like what you were saying, right? Those four brands or the four uh, influencers that you named. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every time I've ever messaged them or worked with them, they operate like a business. They are. They they when you reach out to them, they're not like, yeah, what's a date I can come by? And then now the restaurant owner might be thinking, oh, he's you know he might not charge me or I don't know to ask. Yeah. No, they're like, no, this is my price. This is my availability. This is when I can come out. Yep. That's that's a business. I learned. Um, there are there are four people, and I, I'm I'm big on I'm big on giving credit where it's due. Yeah. When I first started, I was like every other foodie. I was just doing. I didn't realize it was a business. My guy unlocked, sat me down, and was like, "Bro, this is a business. You need to schedule it and treat it the same way you do real estate." Uh, my homegirl Talls, Talia, you guys mm -hmm. have seen Talls on yep. Instagram. Oh, yeah. She treats it like a business. She has an assistant. They schedule. They do filming. Everything like mm -hmm. that. Hooked. Put me on game. 
hey man, here's how to set up a media kit. Here's how to do everything and treat it like a business. Wow. And there's a woman named Local Living. Her name is Cody. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. amazing. She's the one who put me on to the menu. You need to have a media kit. She you, definitely sent me a menu. You, you need to have mm-hmm. a menu. Do people want just TikTok? Do they want Instagram? Want do they want a combination of both? Do they want stories? Full how spread. many? <laughs> All that. Yeah. Right. So like. The foodies who treat it like a business are the most successful ones. And you don't need to have the biggest following as long as you do treat it like a business and you're a professional. Mm-hmm. Um, as a restaurant owner yourself, have you ever thought about having a foodie on retainer? And what I mean by that is setting up, instead of doing like a one-off shoot, doing like, okay, listen, we're going to pay you this amount over the next six months to do this many videos per month. So I have thought about it. Um, where my whole notion of not doing it goes into, because a lot of restaurant owners that I've noticed mm-hmm. are behind the scenes. You don't know who they are because restaurant owners started off as chefs. They started off in the back of the kitchen, so they don't know social media that much. Right. So that's where a, uh, foodie on a retainer being kind of like the face of the brand yeah. comes into play. I built my personal brand with my food brand. So I get in my own head to where I'm like, no, I don't need that because I am my own foodie in a sense yes um would it help me definitely i just haven't thought of maybe let's say the right one to represent my brand because i'm over here like man it's my brand i'm representing it i'm on my faces i'm doing what these foodies would be doing yeah you know you see me like i posted a video yesterday i'm I'm like 120 bowls it's vanilla rice about to do this when i say you i just meant like you you're actually good at social media Right, I credit credit where it's credit to you. Appreciate You're it. actually good at social media. You've built a following based on not just the quality of your food, the quality of your entertainment and your videos. You treat it like a business. When I say you, I mean like uh, restaurant owners or, or chefs who may be watching this. Yeah, I definitely think so, especially if they're not willing. Not and not only that they're not willing to get in front of the camera. A lot of them don't have the time. Yeah, like like let's put a perfect example, right? My boy, shout out Bullethead. He our burgers. I mean, you you would think the guy owns our burgers. <laughs> He bro, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Bullet, bullet head is the perfect example yep, of why follower yep. count doesn't matter. If I was a restaurant owner, I would hire bullet head over me. Mm. I would hire bullet head over me. Mm. If I was a restaurant owner, that man works so hard. Yeah, he does so hard. Always. He field. pumps out more content for your business than you would ever dream. Of. I would never like, I'm being real. I would shout never out bullet head. shout out bullet head. Yeah. I would never. Boy, that man, he needs equity in our burgers. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I ate <laughs> our burger like our burgers was my jam. Yeah. I probably eat there once a week now because of bur- bu- bullet head. Yeah. Every time I open my phone, something different. cheap bro. B- pastrami fries. Pastrami fries. Four dollar deals. I know it all. For I've never real. Even been there. And For I know his the menu because of him. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When I'm telling you chefs to do your yeah. research, do that kind of research. Yeah. See how hard that influencer is willing to go. For your restaurant. Yeah. Does he treat your... Because like as a business owner, you want your employees to, to care about your restaurant, right? This is every every business. You train your employees to care about your restaurant, yep. treat it like a family, give it 110%, right? I think you should hold your influencers to that mm. same standard, right? Okay. This is a business. I If I'm bringing you in as a, on a retainer to fill my restaurant, I need you to care and work hard like... Like yeah. someone who who works for the business, yeah. And I think establishing a relationship like that is, I think it's the best thing for both sides, yeah. For I both agree. the influencer and the and the chef. I agree. Um, like I said, you know, to the point where you think the guy owns the place, right? And he should. Um, and I do think that it's very beneficial, right? Because I luckily. Um, when I first started out, I always told myself I want to run a business. Mm-hmm. I don't want the business to run me. So that was always my goal was to not be behind the grill as much yeah. so that I can focus on the brand. Yes. Right. And that's where, and, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong or touch on this, right. Building a brand when it comes to the restaurant, right. The, I think restaurant owners just open the doors and they're just like, come in, come in. I don't know. Th- th- that, does that work still? My, my wife, I know the answer. But I want to hear from you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a quick yeah. little mm-hmm. aside. So I recently brought my wife in as my operations manager. Nice. Just because it cuts down. I mean, she's spending all my money anyway. She might as well. Yeah, t- might as well. Yeah, she might as well do yeah. something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Ba- baby, I, baby, I love you. Um, yeah. The you thing too. she says the most to me is like, Brandon, how do they even stay open? Like, <sighs> like how do they stay in? Like, the way they be, like... Because she's starting to recognize the difference between good good restaurants and good business owners and bad ones, you know? And I'm like, baby, now you get to see from our end, they're not building a brand. They're not treating it as a business. They're treating it as a restaurant. And they're thinking if they open their doors, people will just show up because they have good food. 
you can have the best food in the whole world. China mm-hmm. Mama, China Mama had great food before I showed up there, before Zero influencers market. showed up. Their marketing wasn't very good, so mm-hmm. no one knew about it. So yeah. all that good food was going to was going to waste. So what 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 is your opinion on this? Because you because you said you you had a feeling of, of you knew where this was going. Yeah, I agree. I think that you don't always have to be the best. You just have to market the best. Right, you could sell. I, I, the joke I always make is you could sell dog turds, bro. But if you know how to make them dog turds look amazing, yeah. people are gonna buy your dog turds. Well, that's <laughs> you know, in, in an extreme <laughs> in way. It, but that's the point. That's the that's how crucial it is. Yeah, is like I'm comparing it to selling dog turds. You know, like you, I, I. There's other companies that sell the same food as me. Sure, but I know that I am. I'm not in comp- food competition with them. No, I'm in marketing competition uh-huh. with them. You are. You have. <laughs> I wish I could take what you just said and repeat it for every realtor in mm. in Nevada. Yeah. Bro, you're I'm not like we're not in a biz like I'm not in a real estate competition with y'all. Yeah. Like y'all are way better at whatever it is that you do. You're in a marketing competition yeah. with me and yeah. you're not going to beat me. Where attention goes, money goes. You where attention goes, money goes. Yeah. Um think about like um this is going to be a weird how, how old are you? Do you are you old enough to remember when the iPod first came out? No. Okay. I'm 27. So I don't remember when it came out, but I remember some of the first ones. Okay, okay, yes, okay. Yes, I okay, do remember okay. some of the first okay. ones. Okay. Yes. When the iPod dropped, Microsoft had something called the Zune. Mm. The so Zune. Yeah, I'm too young for oh, that, bro. For sure. the it Z- sounds familiar. The Zune had like twice the amount of songs it could hold. I mean, back when I back when the i yeah. the little the uh, the little iPod could only hold like a hundred songs, bro. The Zune could hold a thousand. It was a better product in every way. But Apple is just such a better marketer to, than Microsoft that the Zune died and the iPod took over and eventually led to the yeah, iPhone. I, I just saw a video on this the other day. It said there's a reason why uh, iPhones are $1,000 and Androids are two fifty, and iPhones sell out. And they're, wor- and they're a worse product. Yeah. Your iPhone is a worse product, but yeah. it's marketed so it they marketed it so well that there's some girls who won't even f with a dude if, they got a if green you don't text. Got a, if you got a green text. That's <laughs> yeah. how good That's iPhones marketing is. They took over where diamonds left off, where girls now see Apple products as a sign of success. Mm. That's marketing. Yeah, uh, Stanley Cups. Stanley yeah. Cups. Were is a brand that's been around forever. When those when those started popping off, I thought they were talking about the hockey Stanley. I was so confused. I was like, "What is this Stanley Cup? Why are and girls into hockey?" Yeah, now, I was bro. so like, confused until I saw the cup actually, and it said Stanley, and I was like, "Whoa, I've seen these before." What is what that? It was I knew about a Stanley Cup before. That's why I couldn't assume that it was for that. I thought the Stanley Cup was just blowing up and hockey was getting popular and all that. I and couldn't so, figure it out. Yeah. Then I realized that some genius in they hired some genius in marketing to go, hey, you know these big ugly metal cups? Yeah. What if we just make them like pink and green and girly and shit? Do you think you think that would work? And and there you go, in your face. So, Instead of marketing it to forty year old construction workers, yeah, you market right? your cups to twenty one year old girls who like collecting things. And it blew up. And it blew up. Marketing. Marketing. You hear that? Marketing. Branding. Um, so obviously we touched on how crucial branding and marketing is kind of want to touch on, uh, by the way, this is the rich off food podcast. We got straight into it. This is my dog right here. We could talk for hours. Um, you have for sure seen this man's face a million times. If not heard his voice, you could probably recognize his voice. It's my guy, Brandon from Vegas. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. I love just jumping right into it, man. I think, thing. I think the audience doesn't need an introduction anymore, yeah. right? Cause your audience follows you. Yeah. They know you. Yeah. If they reckon, if they're watching it cause they see my face, they know me, Post. right? They want to get right into what the hell we're talking about. Mm-hmm. That might be interesting for them. Yeah. I love the way you did the, yeah. the fire open like that. I man. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I was telling him, uh, uh, there was like maybe five minutes where we were chopping it up. I looked over at the record. I'm like, it's not recording. Yeah, let's record. Hit yeah. the record button, yeah. bro. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I don't need a warm up with you. Yeah. No, not at all. I don't all. need a warm up with you. Yeah. By the way, and everybody needs to hear this cause I'm big on, calling people out who do the who do the real thing last year i had to throw a, a cannoline party for my brother he owns cannoline shout out to cannoline and the only person i called one person to provide food and it was you mm. and this man right here did a cannoline party for every big cannabis person in las vegas and he did it to me for free now i didn't let him get away with that but he tried to do it for me for free because that's my dog and he he the since the day i've met you you have been the realest person ever. And anybody who watches this podcast, I need you guys to know everything you see and hear about this man is 100% true. If you ever have anybody say a bad word about this person, just know that it's completely false. And I'll never believe you about it. That's just 100% facts. 
Damn, you're about to have me out here shedding a tear. No, that's one hundred percent. I appreciate bro. that. No, that means a lot, man. Uh, means a lot because it says a lot to my integrity, and that's how I that's how I operate, bro. I just yes. I always try to have integrity. I always try to be good to people, um, and that just means a lot coming from somebody like you because you you don't tell lies either. No, you tell the facts. And it gets me in trouble a lot. Yeah, I know. Me too. I can't <laughs> lie. I'm not. I'm not. I can't remember the lies. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like I, I, my 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 brother one time. Make me cramp my, up. <laughs> my, 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 my brother one time, bro. He um, they were we worked at the same restaurant. And they were um, they were trying to give him more days, and he's like, man, I don't want more days. But I'm gonna tell him I'll go to. I'm going to school. I said, but you need to remember, remember that. <laughs> I go- said, yeah, because four months down the road, they're gonna ask you, and if you say, nah, man, I'm, uh, I got my, that other job that yeah. I didn't want to tell them about, they're gonna be like. So you, it seems like you haven't learned shit, I just, buddy. I just learned. So my bad. I don't mean to grab this. I think it might be our boy Giuliano calling. No, that's me. authentic. Oh, Giuliano's on his way. You ever seen a oh, yeah. ESPN when like Adam Schefter is getting a, a trade? You, you watch much Sports Center or anything like that? No, not as much as I'd like to. Oh man, like, any of the big reporters. Like yeah. they, what makes them cool is that they like they, they're so busy that they have to answer their phone live on camera. Oh, like, so that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. That Hold was up. In. The GM of the Redskins. Oh, I can't call him that more. The GM of the Raiders oh, is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, well, hey, I almost got us canceled. There you go. Yeah, no, the no, GM no. of the Raiders is texting me. Let me, yeah. you know, that it looks cool when you have to answer your phone. And, and it's funny because a couple years ago that would have been disrespectful. I know. You know. But it's kind of a marketing thing now when you think about it. It's yeah. like, oh damn, that dude's busy. He's I'm popping. so busy. Cool. I have to answer my phone. Yeah, I was just getting like four texts and I was like, okay, I don't want to miss Juliano, bro. I don't want him to be like, hey, I'm on my way and I don't hit him back. That's my dude. And then next thing, oh, that's my guy too. Bro, yeah. I you get you're bringing all the best people in here, man. I'm trying to, bro. You know? Um, to, uh, I want to circle back because okay, we, we talked about something it. earlier, let's and you it. brought up Giuliano, and yeah. I—he's someone, he's someone who did this whole game, the food, social media thing, the right way. Yeah, I'll I tell agree. you what he did. So, um, Giuliano, owner of the three hundred three in the cut food truck, best food truck in the game. Yep. You know that's that's man's pots and pans. Okay. He straight up asked Talls, who I told you about earlier, who's yeah. a real one. He was just like, hey, you know, you guys have been shooting videos for me, and I really do appreciate it. Could you just teach me how to do this? Like, I'm in my truck all the time. I'm I'm always, you know, filming. Like, can you just teach me how to do it? And he straight up had Talls do a whole layout for him of how to wow. film, how to edit, how to check TikTok, how to search for your thing. Um, he had me show him a few things just in terms of, like, how to present, how to do hashtags, da 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 and did it himself. And now he doesn't ever have to. Now you know we still show up to to film. I've but never. I mean, yes, I see you guys, right? I see friends go there and and, and shoot and stuff like that. Yeah. But I've never seen uh, like a because I can tell when it's paid. Yeah, I can tell, right? I've been in the game for a minute. Sure, I know every influencer and what they do, <laughs> and I can tell, right? I yeah, he's killing it. And and I and what's cool about that is you know he I I don't know. Do you know what year he started? Giuliano. Yeah. No, I just know that truck popped up one day. I heard about it. Yeah. Oh, I saw him at the uh, the Great Foodie Fest. Got it. And Got I tried to win the award. He won the he award. Won the award. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yo, this this green yeah. chili chicken burrito is, is actually fire. fire. Yeah. yeah, for real. It's not just hype and TikTok. No. Yeah. I remember I went out and filmed for him. I like, okay, okay. So he's right next to. A lot of people don't know this, but he was right next to the strip club. Played against Sam. Like, he still is. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of people didn't realize that. Yeah. And so I pulled up. I'm like, who's the man with yeah. the truck next to the who's strip club? Was this? Yeah. <laughs> and I was out there, bro. And the food was so good. I remember I went live on TikTok, and we mm. probably had like 1,500 people watching me eat yeah. his. Grinch, oh, I swear, this one TikTok Live used to be cracking. And we had like 1,500 people watch me sit out there on Spring Mountain, or Spring, yeah, Spring Mountain, eating that Grinch, and they couldn't believe that. I was like, bro, I swear to y'all right now, it's the best best food truck, you got to come try it. And Giuliano realized the the value of social media marketing after the Keith Lee thing went viral. And he was like, wait a minute. Before, actually. Yeah. So he, so, 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 and I don't mean to uh, cut you off, but he is very strict on, he was doing it before. No, no, no. And let me, let me, but but I get what you're saying. No, no, my bad. It's, it's, so he, Giuliano was doing the social media stuff before, but it typically takes the first viral video for you to, for it to fully believe. I agree with you. Yes. Right. So Giuliano, like I, I'm, I am t- t- I can I can testify because I was in his truck watching Talls. In fact, I have a video on my phone wow. of Talls and me in his truck because Talls was educating me at the same time. Mm. I have a video of all three of us in his truck. So this was way before the Keith wow. Lee video, and yeah. I mean like literally months and months and months before, right? And it was the cheesecake video that he made himself that brought Keith Lee because maybe I don't remember Keith Lee stitched 
his cheesecake video. Correct. It was like, oh shit. Yeah, that looks amazing. That video yeah. that Keith Lee stitched was made by Giuliano. So he wow. was doing it yeah. for Keith Lee. But it's the first viral video, and you can ask any influencer. It's the first one that makes your brain go, oh shit. Yeah. This, I can really do this. And I have a ex almost exact story because I was always doing social media. Mm -hmm. I always knew that it was popping. I was doing social media. And when I say doing social media, just posting because in 2014, 2015, uh, sorry, let's go 2016 when I was cooking at the restaurant that I used to work at, it wasn't really videos. It was just pictures, you know, and I would post pictures of me cooking on the grill. And so that's how I built up a name before I even opened my own business. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so when I did open it, I knew that I need to post videos. I had my buddy, he would actually help me plate stuff and he was a videographer at the same time. So he was helping me plate the food and taking videos at the same time. So we were like, and it wasn't short form content either back then. I would have him make me videos and this is exactly what I'd say. I say, I want my videos to look like music videos, mm -hmm. bro. They would go crazy mm -hmm. talking about me in slow motion, looking like I'm a, <laughs> you think I'm about to spit a verse and I'm pulling up some hibachi chicken, you know? And it, it was dope. But the, 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 the funny part and to, to fast forward just slightly is that those videos don't actually work now. They don't work as good no. now, but, um, to back to that was, um, I, once I got my food truck, I knew social media was popular. And so I started learning about foodies and food truck game or, or, or uh, foodies and, and food posting and all that. And so I was in contact with hooked shout out hooked. That's my boy. That's my dog. And, um, you know, at the time I didn't, I, I didn't have the budget, bro. You know, he was charging X amount. I think it was like three, $400. And I was like, at the time I was like, Whoa, that's crazy yeah. for a post. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just had a conversation. He was trying to run the social media, this and that, you know, he did his, gave me his media kit. He was doing a media kit then. See, right? he's a business man. And, he was, and yeah. that's when he was, he was very, um, he still was super popular, but he was still nothing to what he is now. Yeah. And, um, he hit me up randomly. He was like, yo bro, I'm in the neighborhood. Can I pull up to your food truck? I was like, yeah, bro, for sure. I'll get you. I got you on a plate. Like, gets there. Can I make a video for you? Yeah, sure. Bro. Video did 1.2 million views overnight. <laughs> And I basically that was that was a Keith Lee effect before Keith Lee was yep. doing his thing. Yep. And what you exactly what you just said was I knew social media was popping and, yeah. and, and content was popping, but I was a believer. Like talk about like every day I wake up, that was my focus. Yes. With social media after that, you know. But one to one point two billion views isn't just viral. That's if you cross if you I, I aim for hundred K. hundred K to me is enough because remember the videos last forever. So Correct. it's not just going to be 100K this week. Yeah. That video is going to stay in circulation Correct. for all the time, right? But when you cross that million mark, now you're getting people traveling from Utah. Where's the craziest people? Where's the craziest spot someone traveled to come to your truck? Doc, okay, I was tripping, right, when people were saying Texas, New York. Yeah. Bro, this couple came from Australia. <laughs> tripping. And they were laughing at me because I couldn't stop smiling. I was doing like my, I can't believe you guys. Can. They're like, oh, you know, they're, they're amazing accent they have. Was the they were like, <laughs> like, look at your cheeky, you know, like yeah. you're so cheeky. I'm like, I just can't believe it. You're from and Australia. They, they saw my video from a Don Q. Don Q. And we did another million with him. Don Q. Don Q. Shout out Don I Q. I actually have to do the, I have to do the check. Yeah, no, no, me too, actually. Yeah, gotta do the check. Let me do it real quick, because I did get another phone call, and we I'm like, at, just we, make sure. We're Adam Schefter out it. here. We got <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I like hey, doing podcasts with other businessmen yeah, yeah. who kind of like it. Really, we, we get it, we, you know? And no, you're going to leave here, and I'm like, that Brandon from Vegas, dude, was disrespectful. This He's is on his phone the whole time. <laughs> like, oh, I can't believe that, I guy, hope bro. you slandered yeah. the <laughs> can't believe it. I'm never bringing him back. <laughs> No, I hope I you it. and Giuliano bust well, me up. Well, 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 yeah, I'm like, I can't believe that's so. Oh my god, that motherfucker, bro, brand, bro. Fuck, I hate them. Horrible for my brand. No, <laughs> no, I, I love it, bro. And I, I love when when other people understand the same things as me and their brains think the same. Yeah, it's hard to find people like that. You, um, people need to treat the influencer, food owner, chef relationship. Ooh, talk about that. The same way you do. Everything else. Uh, I'm not local living. I'm going to shout her out a lot because to me, yeah. she's the most underrated foodie in the game. Like, period, end of story. If you're like, what, there's some brands she is way better for than me. Mm. If you have a much classier, much more forward brand and you want your videos to look quality and look commercial ready and look professional and presentable, 
I, I, you, I can't think of a better person to hire than her. Mm. If you go watch her videos, all of them, professional, yeah. clean, great lighting, great editing, fun, all of that, right? What works for me is like a diner where you don't give a shit about yeah. the editing. <laughs> yeah. You want to see the phone You want to yeah. see that big chili cheese burger, yep. that yep. steak and you want to see me just crush that bitch. Yeah. That works for me, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of a lot of you know chefs they're like, "Oh, this person's popular. But It'll just work." Get him in here. No, it may it not work for his brand, the, their brand. I'm yeah. telling you the only person I've ever seen that work for is and again, I'm going to sound like I'm I think they call it glazing nowadays. Yeah. The only person don't I think worry. that works for is unlocked or Keith Lee, where it doesn't matter the restaurant. If Drew, if Unlock shows up or Keith Lee shows up, bro, it's gonna work. Well, it's cool that you realize that you have a certain. Unless I don't want to call it a, a niche, but in a sense, right? You know what works. You know your strengths. You know your weaknesses. Yeah. Um, I don't know how Unlocked and Hooked did it to where they can openly work with everybody. Um, and their brand is known for whatever. And I don't like to say whatever, but any style. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's cool that you understand your strengths and your weaknesses, and you know you're you're willing to say like, no, nah, it's not going to work. No, if there's a comp I've had companies reach out to me, local businesses reach out to me, and I look through the thing. I'm like, hey, my videos aren't going to work for you. Mm. I'm not just going to take your. I'm not going to take your money. Yeah. I'm not like if I happen to stroll into your business and I I film it, that's one thing, right? Because yeah. then at that point it doesn't matter. I'm well, just super authentic too. It's authentic, know? yeah, yeah. But like, not that nothing else is, but you know, yeah. And it's like, but if I'm coming for promotion, like I'm gonna tell you straight up, like it's not gonna work. Like what I would have to do to make your video look good, my audience would hate it. Like this is a yeah. true story. Yeah, I, I, I've <laughs> yeah. never told anybody this on camera. About two years ago, I tried making my videos more professional. Mm. So I brought out the light, you know. I did the cap yeah. cut. I did the yeah. editing. Wow. Bro, my audience hated it. Like, What's this every... bullshit you're posting, bro? bro? They, who, my... got, who got a gun to Brandon's bro, head? Bro, for real. <laughs> People were just like, yeah. oh, oh, guess Brandon's doing paid promotions. And I'm yeah. like, no. I still, these are still me. But yeah. like, my audience doesn't like that. Yeah. They like that They're my, raw. I got mayonnaise and mustard in my, they like yeah. that shit, yeah. you know? And yeah, so it's like. figured out what works. I figured out what works. And I just, I, I just give people what they want to see. And, and, and I want to touch, that's amazing. I want to touch on what you said about relationships with the foodies, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, perfect example. I could tell an amazing story, right? Don Q, you know, that's not my, he's not my best friend. But when I, I created such a great relationship with him, I'm saying hi to his kids when he shows up. And, you know, I'm, I message him every once in a while saying, hey, what's up? He sent me, he sent me and my wife uh, Uber Eats, or uh, not Uber Eats. I know you have beef with them right now. I'm just playing. Uh, he sent me something. I don't know if it was DoorDash, but I'm just joking. DoorDash, Postmates, whatever. But when when me and my wife had our daughter and we were at the house for a month, he sent he sent me food. He's no like, what do you want? He was like, "What do you want?" I was like, "Oh man, we really want this and that." He was like, "Yeah, you got it, man. Sent it." Because he got like he got kids, man. He... Well, he understands. But then also too, if I was just if I kept the super transactional, yeah. which yes, at the end of the day, it was. Yeah. Right. But I don't see it like that. I see it as more than that. Like I go out, I see. I see Phil. Yeah. Right. I'm like, what's up, brother? We we chopping it up. Yeah. I seen him at an event that he didn't know I was gonna be there, and now we're kicking it during the event. Yeah. You know, and I'm a restaurant owner, or they invited me to the brunch boy thing the one time. Yeah. And now we're homies. Now we're homies. But it's because of the relationship. relationship. You know, I have a conversation. I'm not just like, yeah, film this. I'll be right back. You know. Because you're a businessman. You network. Mm -hmm. That's what business. You deal. You deal deals. I sell houses because people like me. Mm -hmm. Right, you buy things from people who like you. Yeah, you're a likable person. Thank you. And most of these, most of, I'm, I'm okay sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> most of the chefs that I meet are likable if you get them talking, if yeah. you get them going, and stuff like that. But they also don't want to go out and network with the influencers and foodies and stuff like that. You told the story earlier about how hooked you showed up to your truck, right? But that's because we like you. Yeah. So if I'm driving by and I see the truck, I'm like, oh, let me pull over and get something to eat. Mm -hmm. And then as a foodie, if I'm going to eat somewhere, I'm going to I'm gonna film it. Yeah, like, of course. Straight yeah. up. Yeah. Even if I wasn't planning well, it's on It's all natural for you, too. You're it's just going to pull your phone out. I'm going to pull like, my phone out. It's to the point where you probably film every meal. I do. Yeah. <laughs> because to me as a foodie, why would I ever eat a meal anymore and not film it? Mm -hmm. For what? For what? Well, for what purpose? Yeah. I'm here. The content's here. It's in front of me. Why not use this? It's it's free content in it's the free sense content. because it's something you're gonna we eat three meals a day. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat three meals. I've actually cut back to one because my ass is getting real wow. chunk, real chunky. Victory, victory! You be seeing me, you be seeing me, yeah, bro. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, bro, I love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> many people message me and be like, Brandon, diet's the most important part, and I'm like, bitch, do you know what I do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> if I went on a diet, like, yeah. where would y'all find food? I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I want a diet, I'm. 
We're going to be eating salads all day, shouting out salad restaurants. Y- y'all don't want to see me eat. I, trust me, I've been to a vegan restaurant. The views weren't there. People don't yeah. want to watch me eat healthy food. Yeah, well, well I mean, I, I think the vegan population and the 8 billion people we have in the world is like. Point it's so zero, small. Zero, people zero. think ve- <laughs> people think like the vegan thing it's is like, like the biggest thing. No, yeah, bro. No vegan places crack on social media. Just don't go off like that. Yeah, like yo, check out this almost chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. <laughs> people want to see me eat steak and yeah. tacos yeah. and pizza, bro. Yeah. Like the shit that they like to eat. You know? Well, and, and and not to not to bash on anybody, but I know Veggie Nation recently closed down. And they had and they had a good product. They were they were really good. Taco Tarian does well, but they it's do great. It's, it's tacos, right? They like they have great. a they have a, actually really good. Fresh they ingredients. Are. I've I've been there a few times. My they uncles are. are vegan, so when we used to go eat a lot. Okay. Um we would we could I could only eat vegan. Or we would go to um Asian restaurants that have a vegan menu. Vegan, yeah, Asian yeah. restaurants have always had a vegan menu. Indian people and Indian restaurants mm. kill uh ve- that's the best to me, that's the best we talked about Indian restaurants yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. They oh, do yeah. the best they do the best vegan food. If I was gonna go vegan, I would hundred percent eat Indian food every day. Well, they have so much flavors and spice. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. I remember I went, I forgot the name of it, but I went with my buddy and I, was, I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was like I felt it all back here. All, yeah. I was like, that was crazy what I just ate. A little off topic. Have you yeah. been to the secret Indian fried chicken place? Nah. I'll put you, I'm not going to give okay. it away on camera because I don't want to blow it up yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm going to show you off camera. There's a secret okay. Indian fried chicken spot. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indian fried Indian chicken. fried chicken, bro. And I tell you, it goes okay. crazy. People think I put every spot. On social media, because I because I see that, let's, and let's talk about that. Because I see, I read comments. We all read comments, right? And I saw one the other day that was like, "Man, I went to that Mexican spot the other day. You said it was the best, and it was trash, you know." And that's and then the comment of that is, "Oh, he just says every restaurant's the best." What do you when when you see that? What 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 do you? What's your response, or how do you? Deal I with like that, I, guess? I like those people. Okay. If everyone agreed with me on everything, do you know how awful life would be? Yeah. If we all like the same things, right? Mm. I wish people could disagree in a less callous manner. Yeah. I wish people were people okay. Start, people go in, bro. Yeah. It's like yeah. if you don't share every single opinion with me, you're a bad person. Yeah. Right? I don't like that kind of mentality. I'm a diverse person. I like diversity. And if you're going to have diversity, you have to have diversity of thought. Mm-hmm. Right? So... But I like people who disagree with me. It, Carolina's, the place you're talking about is Carolina's. To me, it is the best home-cooked Mexican meal you can get outside of your own home. I, I genuinely think that. I genuinely eat there. And there's a lot of people who agree. But we have this human tendency, and they've done studies on this over and over. Mm. We have a tendency to gravitate towards those who dislike us rather than those who like us. So even if a video— we're trying to make them look— because we want every, the validation because we want everyone to like us yeah, it's just yeah. a human thing mm-hmm. uh thankfully uh i used to rap so i'm used to people not liking me or booing oh, me or, a rapper? oh bro i got whole i got so many stories for you man P- i'm brandon vegas from real like this is not really because ra- it's not that was, that, that's a rap name but it's not just a moniker like i'm for mm. real this guy right yeah but like videos will have <laughs> videos will have 10 it. videos will have ten thousand likes but people focus on the two people who don't. Well, there's 10,000 people who liked your video. Yeah. Who cares what two people in the comments section said? Yeah. That's such a small percentage. That's that's vegans compared to meat eaters, basically. Yeah, right, right. The whole, that's all, vegans. All, all 100%. 100%. And I just talked to uh, Nettie from Slang and Tacos before this, and we we um, we had a similar conversation. That's another real one. That uh, Yeah, oh, great dude. Amazing conversation. Came from nothing, right? And uh, But but a, a thing that even he said he struggles with, and I did too, is that one comment, bro. It eats away at you, dog. I, yeah, I, he's sitting over there saying he got one that said the salsa was too hot, and he said he's reconsidering his whole entire brand. Not Obviously not now, but when he started, right? He's like, should I should I mild it up? Should I do this? And he, I'll be honest, I've had a few. I've had a one-star Yelp review or a Google review where I can't sleep at night. Yeah. Uh, when I first started, right? I can't sleep. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is eating me up, bro. Dude, I need to switch brands of chicken. He said it was dry. Yeah. I'm reconsidering my whole purchasing process that got me to where I'm at, right? Guy Savoy, uh, Gordon Ramsay, the best chefs in the world get mm. back. Thomas Keller gets bad reviews on his restaurants. Oh, yeah. And these guys are the best of the best. I see nothing but bad reviews about guys. Or, sorry, not guys, uh, uh, Gordon Ramsay's Gordon Ramsay. restaurants. I'm like, damn. It's because some people just like to be negative, and we live in a world where there's a lot of negative people, and social media gives them an out. What do they hold? Yeah. The, what's the whole joke? Misery loves company. Yeah, yeah. Social media has given miserable people keyboard infinite in, keyboard warriors. It gives them infinite company, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I don't focus on those people. Yeah. I focus on the people who, if I post a video and people like and share the video, that's that's success. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit what people in the wow. comments say. And to you and every restaurant owner, like now. Don't get me wrong. 
I'm not going to say the name of the company, but there was a video I posted recently where over 50% of the comments were something negative. Now, if that's the case, you might reevaluate want it. But yeah. then, but that, again, that's a good thing. You're correct, get, correct. You're getting feedback, yeah. Yeah. critical yeah. feedback that you need from the video. I the, agree. A lot of people think that, you know, I, my, my grandma had this amazing recipe. I'm going to start a restaurant. Yeah. And, you know, yes, you and your grandma might think that recipe is amazing, but if it doesn't react to the world properly. And then the other issue that you, you, you've heard this before, that chefs have egos, right? And mm -hmm. so we always think we have the best and we're the best and all of course, this. Of course. And, and so, you know, it's sometimes you need to be humbled and realize, right? Don't get me wrong. A couple of those bad Yelp reviews that I saw, they were valid. I was like, wow, you're right. You know, my, my, my employee did talk to her a little messed up. 100%. You know, and I, I think all of us are first to be like, oh, you know, this lady, this lady, that, this customer, you know, because cause sure. at the end of the day, you're like, the, the does her opinion, and this goes back and forth, right? Does her opinion matter? Because, you know, how the hours I spend in here, and I've been doing this for 10 years, this and that. No, that guy, my employee's rude to that lady. Of course. That's the truth, you of know, course. but it also takes a lot of, I think, um, what's the word I guess I'm looking for? Not self-realization, but just, you know, accountability. Uh, Self-actualization. Self-actualization yeah. to realize, like, like, let me look at my brand and business from a consumer's perspective, yes. right? To the point now where, and, and I'm going to keep saying this because I think every restaurant owner should do this, right? I send a motivational text message every single day to my employees. I have them in a group chat. And not only motivational, but, like, um, let's let's read the one. I was going to do this on the last Yeah, podcast. read one live. Yeah, read one live. I want to see this. I want to see this. Read one. I can no 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 BS. I'll even show you. Okay, cool. Let's see, so let's go. Uh, let's read two. Let's read two. Let's read one motivational one and one of more team building. Sometimes I they're from the head. Okay. Sometimes I gotta get some inspiration. Okay. Right. Give me give me the one. Give me the one from the head first. Give I, me the one that you, that just came straight from your from your dome. <laughs> this one's actually funny, bro. You want to get that? Let's see who it is. This one's actually funny. So I was listening to a Meek Mill song, right? And this might be bad timing with Meek Mill and the Diddy thing going on, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, uh, in quotations, it's time to marry the game. And I said, yeah, I do. Meek Mill. Married to the restaurant game. I eat, sleep, and breathe it. Let's treat this restaurant like our 10 out of 10 wife. We would never want to do her wrong. We'd always want to love her conditionally, buy her flowers, and show her off. This restaurant is our bad bitch, and I'm ready to put it slash her on a pedestal. <laughs> that and, and, and from the dome yeah. is so much better than anything else. Yeah, I'm that's from the you. dome. Yeah, I that, love that. That that's from the dome. So let, let me let me read another one that was more. This is another one from the dome. I won't even read one that I've gotten inspiration. I said, remember five exclamation points. We want to treat our guests like royalty. Anything and everything we do when there's a guest inside our restaurant, they will remember. They will talk. And Vegas is small. Word spreads fast. Let's have them. Let's have them spread word that Hibachi House not only has the best food, but is the best establishment, the best customer service, and is all around the best. Yes. Let's kill it today. Yes. Yes. Every day. We like we got to finish here because I just looked at the time and yeah, I just realized, yeah you're good you're good you're good what you just said and again because you you have a lot of restaurants who follow you I have a lot of restaurants who follow me Vegas is a city that cares that's crazy Vegas is a city that cares more about customer service than almost any city I've ever been to oh yeah I will go to a restaurant that has mediocre food but top tier customer service any day of the week ten times out of ten mm. because to me. That's what matters, yeah. right? And for you to push customer service for your employees is a huge thing. Oh yeah, because the food could be great, but you know, if someone had a bad time or if the if your employee talked to them the wrong way, to them their whole meal is oh, yeah. ruined. Yeah. Whereas if the meal was kind of okay, but your employee made them feel like a superstar, they're gonna leave there being like, yeah, we can come back here. I feel good in this restaurant. Yeah, and I agree. When I had so you know, unfortunately, I had I had the two locations. The one didn't work out, and the reason the one didn't work out was because of the customer service. I would have customers that would go there because they live closer and would come to my other location that's further because they were like, ah, we didn't really like the vibe over there. Mm. Mm. That's hard. That's hard pill to swallow, right? I'm like, nah, what you got? You guys are tripping. Yeah, but nah, they drove 20 minutes to this other location just because they yeah. said, nah, this is my location. Yep. This is my location. You're seeing it through the consumer's eyes. And to yeah. me, to me, as an owner of any business, that's the best way to go. The consumer right. has to appreciate what your your brand is putting out, and you have to put them first for that, man. I appreciate that. No, yeah, that man. means a lot. That's what I strive for. And I know you got to go, so just a couple more things. Um, this is the Rich Off Food Podcast. I know you are 
what's your what would you say your title is first? Like, would, are you real estate? What would you I'm, say? I'm let, a, let, let the people know what a title would. I'm be. multifaceted. I'm Brandon from Vegas. What you mean? I'm <laughs> I'm a Renaissance yeah, man. I do go. a little bit of everything, man. I, I do everything. I'm a realtor. I am a social media promoter. Ultimately, I'm just a guy who really loves Vegas, and I love nice. showing it off from its houses to its bars to its best restaurants. Incredible. I appreciate that. I appreciate you being on here. I do want to ask one last question. Um, this is the Rich Off Food Podcast. What does Rich Off Food mean to you? Well, shit. I, I sell houses because people like food. Wow. I think food is the ultimate connector, and I think that's the reason – a good restaurant will always attract more business and more excitement than a good hardware store mm. or a good bakery or whatever. Food is an it's a it's the ultimate feeling thing that you can purchase. It means more than a luxury purse or even luxury shoes. So to me, rich off food just means you produce something that genuinely makes people happy, and no one went broke making other people happy. Wow, that's powerful. You heard it here. Brandon from Vegas, Rich Off Food Podcast. I do. I know I gave you some swag before. Did I give you one of these? The hat? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I got a hat. You got a hat? I got a hat. All but right. if you give me another one, I'll take another one. Take it. Can I do a take giveaway? It. Yeah. Go, yeah. Heck heck yeah. Oh, I got a big head. Y'all want to see how big my head is? <laughs> this is how a normal hat fits on my that, large That's head. all the way open on the snaps, too. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I'm getting roasted. Yeah. Or hey, him and Giuliano oh, about the dog. Oh, oh, hey, Arnold hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. Hey, always, brother. Hey, this is the Rich Off Food Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, whatever they say on the end of YouTube videos. But All that. Blow this up. All Appreciate that. Appreciate you, Brandon. Thank you, brother. Big dog. Peace. Let's go. Oh, I'm so late. Bro. Oh, this is. I feel the vibes. These the energy is just in the fucking. In the energy. It's still.